Hi, I'm Monica from the Tatra Educational Park, and today I'll tell you a bit about deer that you can encounter in our park. We are currently in the enclosure with Follow Deer, but in addition to them, in the adjacent enclosure, we also have Lubo, who belongs to a completely different species, as he is a red deer. These are two species that are very closely related because they belong to the deer family and, above all, they have antlers, which are present only in males. This is something that allows us to distinguish the gender of these animals because females do not have antlers. What distinguishes a fallow deer from a red deer includes external appearance. Fallow deer are small-sized animals. Females weigh about 30 to 40 kilograms, while males weigh about 80 kilograms. On the other hand, red deer, especially males, can weigh up to 340 kilograms, and females range from 80 to even 120 kg. So, we can already see a fundamental difference in the size of these animals. Another thing is that fallow deer have what's called shovels. This is entirely different from red deer, as they have crowns. Nevertheless, shovels in fallow deer and crowns in red deer are made of the same tissue that is shed by the males every year. Another distinguishing feature of fallow deer is their coat color. Red deer have a uniform coat color with a white patch around the tail area. Fallow deer, on the other hand, have coats in various colors, ranging from very dark brown almost to black, to very light shades. What's characteristic is that fallow deer have a dark stripe running along their back and usually spots on their sides. It's worth noting that all the deer we have here actually come from breeding, so they don't behave like wild animals. For example, Lubo is a very big pet. He loves to cuddle and enjoys human contact. So all visitors can actually pet him, even hug him, and he won't have the slightest problem with it. However, this behavior partly stems from the growth phase of his antlers and his hormonal balance. When Lubo sheds his antlers, his testosterone levels drop significantly. That's why he behaves very calmly and seeks constant human contact during that time. Antlers are a very specific tissue that is shed every year, and every year a deer or fallow deer puts on a new crown or shovel. So, the appearance of their antlers changes throughout the year. When the antlers start to regrow, around February to March, they are covered with what's called velvet. Antlers velvet is simply a very delicate skin that nourishes the bony tissue underneath. It's a period when they really protect their antlers. When the antlers are fully formed, the deer rubs against trees and various branches to remove all the velvet from their antlers. It can be a rather bloody spectacle, but it's completely natural and safe for the deer. However, remember that our domesticated animals are fully accustomed to human presence, so we can feed them, pet them, and touch them. Those we encounter in the forest are strictly wild animals. They shouldn't have any contact with us. They shouldn't get used to people feeding them or approaching them closely because it can end very dangerously for both them and us. That's all from me. Thank you for your attention. For more information, please visit the Tatra Educational Park for a full lecture on deer. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments and see you in Zakopana. We should never approach wild animals and teach them that it's worth coming to us. Living in the wild, they should be able to fend for themselves and not seek help from us or the food we give them because, after all, they also get food that we eat, which can be really harmful for them. Most often, people feed animals like ducks in the park or various types of wildlife, including deer. Unfortunately, bread is something that can harm such animals. Bread contains a lot of yeast and can often ferment, so in situations where such an animal consumes a large quantity of our bread, it can lead to the cessation of their rumination.